Good morning. It's my pleasure to call this meeting of the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality to order. Today is Wednesday, December 13th, 2023. The time is 9.30 a.m. With us today are Commissioners Emily Lindley and Bobby Janeka, as well as our General Counsel, Mary Smith. Um, and uh, I hope this isn't a sign of things to come, but I need a sidebar already. All right, my lawyer says I can continue. This is comforting. Um, for those of you who are joining us virtually, I'll ask you to please mute your microphones when you're not speaking. For those who, um, who will be making presentations, we'll inform our speakers of their time limits and, on, um, and uh, ask you to not begin speaking until either our general counselor or I have prompted you to do so. Registration has now closed, but if you'd like to address the commission on a particular item, please email agenda at tceq.texas.gov with your name, your affiliation, and the item that you'd like to speak to, and we will do our best to accommodate that request. And with that, I'd like to thank everyone for being present today, and Ms. Smith, I'll have you call the first item. Item number one is the consideration of the application by Corpus Christi Liquefaction LLC for amendment of air quality permit numbers 105710 and PSD TX 1306MI and GHD PSD TX 123M1. The parties have been notified that the commissioners will not take oral argument but may ask questions and those who have signed in will be noted for the record. So for the benefit of those who are not familiar with our process, chapter 55 of our rules lays out a two-part process for analyzing requests for contested case hearings on uh, major source air permit applications, such as the one in front of us. First, we consider whether the requesters have met the procedural and substantive requirements to be entitled to a contested case. And assuming that at least one requester has done so, we then consider which issues are appropriate to refer to SOA for a hearing. So part one is about who gets a hearing and part two is about which issues are referred. Requesters who are affected in a manner different from the general public and who make timely comments articulating personal concerns that are relevant and material to the application and who express those, those concerns in a timely hearing request are entitled to a hearing. Associations can demonstrate standing if, among other factors, the association raises issues that are germane to its purpose and the association identifies a member who would have standing in their own right. And colleagues, we have close to two dozen requests on this item, including two associations. I think Portland Citizens United and Sierra Club have met all the requirements for standing. PCU identifies Mindy and James Rawson as members who I believe would have standing in their own right, given the type of emissions at issue and that the Rawsons reside within a mile and a half of the terminal. Sierra Club member Ms. Mrs. Hughes is similarly situated to the Rawsons. Um, I'll suggest that we refer to SOA for an effectiveness determination, the request of Mr. Serna and Ms. Parkinson. Um, we have a conflicting record, I think, on the proximity of their properties to the, um, to the terminal, and that's a key fact in determining um, whether Mr. Serna is affected in a manner different from the general public. And uh, Ms. Parkinson asserts a recreational interest at that same address, and because daily recreational interests uh, can be enough to establish a personal justiciable interest her request also requires an understanding of the proximity of, of her activities to the facility. So I would refer those two requests really for a determination of, you know, at least mainly how, how close are those activities occurring to the terminal. Um, I would deny the remaining requests because they fail to describe how the requesters would be personally affected. So. That's how I come out on part one, the parties. Uh, Commissioner Lindley, what do you think? <clears throat> I, I mostly agree. It came down ever so slightly different. I agree on uh, PCU and the Sierra Club, admitting them. For effectiveness, um, I agree that Mr. Cerna, because of his proximity, that 
we kind of need to get figured out, but looks like he could be very close to the facility. So I'm okay referring him for effectiveness. Ms. Parkinson, I didn't quite get there. Um, it is a little bit of a tough call historically. I know I've in the past wasn't convinced by a recreational use um, for that to be why, or that didn't convince me enough um, in order to send someone for effectiveness. And so uh, I, I didn't, I agree with everything, but but that one, I, I'm not quite there yet on uh, referring her for effectiveness. So I'll stop there. Thank you, Commissioner Janeka. I will simply say I, I think the information from uh, Mr. Cerna's reply and the recreational interests that Mrs. Miss Parkinson asserted that she and her family enjoyed uh, moved them to the threshold of referral for effectiveness as well. So I'm I'm in agreement with you, Chairman. Okay. Um, I think historically it's been difficult to establish affected person standard based on allegations of a recreational interest. And in my mind, that's been due to the fact that we don't have um, much of a record or the, the, uh, the assertion of a recreational interest is not very, not very um, concrete yeah. or known. And um, you know, I think what we have here is an assertion of a daily interest, um, which you know, it's an assertion that I think is a, maybe a little bit more than we usually have. Um, but, um, you know, perhaps we should, um, and here's, here's an idea, refer it, but, you know, with, um, with instructions to SOA that they're going to look not only at the proximity issue, but um, look closely at the evidence around um, the, the, the scope and extent of the recreational interest. And really what it turns on is whether that interest um, situates Ms. Ms. Parkinson differently from the general public. Are her interests unique to her? Or um, um, Commissioner Janeka can propose a motion and we can pass it on two votes. Um. I'm going to go with option B. That would probably be my preference. Uh, just, uh, you know, I think the reality is she, she might she might very well be admitted, but I'm going to leave that up to the judge um, for them to determine if and if she wants to continue down that road. Um, anyway, so hopefully that answers your question. <laughs> it does. Yeah, okay. fair enough. I respect that. Um, all right, well, let's talk about the issues and see if we can um, have some agreement on the issues. Um, with the understanding that you're unlikely to vote on a motion anyway, but I still care what you think about the issues. Thank you. Um, so I would refer the following, whether the uh, proposed emissions will adversely affect the health of individuals or uh, member requesters or their families or their animals, whether the proposed emissions will negatively impact air quality, whether the proposed emissions will cause nuisance conditions, whether the air quality analysis and emissions calculation methodologies meet um, all the relevant requirements, whether there is a demonstration of BACT, and whether the monitoring and reporting requirements um, are appropriate and meet the applicable requirements. So those, that's how I would define the, the issues. Uh, I, I, I would be in agreement. <laughs> Likewise. Um, all right. Colleagues or Commissioner Janeka, I think we're ready for a motion. I will be a little <clears throat> presumptuous and assume that a maximum day of maximum duration of 180 days is agreeable. And and uh, yeah. I don't think there are any other other matters there. I move that we grant the hearing requests of Portland Citizens United and Sierra Club. That we refer the individual hearing requests of Encarnacion Serna and Blanca Parkinson to SOA for an effect or hearing on effectiveness that we deny all remaining hearing requests, and that we refer the following issues to SOA for a contested case hearing. A, whether the proposed emissions will adversely affect the health of individual or member requesters, their families and their animals. B, whether the proposed emissions will negatively impact air quality, including whether the emissions will cause or contribute to an exceedance of an applicable national ambient air quality standards or exceed applicable allowable prevention of significant deterioration increments. 
C, whether the proposed emissions will cause nuisance conditions affecting the use and enjoyment of individual or member requesters' property in violation of 30 Texas Administrative Code, Section 101.4. D, whether the air quality analysis and emissions calculation methodologies in the application are adequate to satisfy applicable requirements. E, whether the application demonstrates compliance with best available control technology. And F, whether the monitoring and reporting requirements in the draft permit are adequate to satisfy applicable requirements. And I finally move that we set the maximum duration of the hearing at 180 days from the first day of the preliminary hearing to the date of the proposal for decision issued by SOA. To the, I'll clarify, I'll restate that, to the date the proposal for decision is issued by SOA. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, the motion has been made. I second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Nay. The motion carries. Ms. Smith, when you're ready, please call the next item. Item number two is the consideration of the application by Venetian 141 Swisher LLC for new TPDS permit number WQ0016165001 The parties have been notified that the commissioners will not take oral argument but may ask questions and those who have signed in will be noted for the record. So we have the same two-part analysis for considering requests for contested cases on TIPTI's permits. Part one, again, is about who gets a hearing, and part two is about which issues are referred. Um, governmental entities can demonstrate standing if, in addition to the procedural and substantive requirements that I've previously described, um, they show statutory authority over or interest in the issues relevant to the application. And colleagues, on this item, we have a single requester from a governmental entity. That's the North Texas Municipal Water District. The district asserts that the applicant system would interfere with its statutory right, privilege, and economic interest in its regional wastewater treatment system, um, including its proposed collection lines within about three miles of the applicant's proposed facility. Uh, I believe the, the district is affected in a manner different from the general public and agree with the executive director and OPIC that we should, um, um, that the district is entitled to a hearing. And I would refer this matter on the issue of our regionalization policy, including consideration of need and the district's designation as a regional entity. Commissioner Lindley. I'm in agreement. Um, I would also consider a ADR referral, but I'm in total agreement otherwise. Yeah. Likewise. Well, I can attempt a motion then. I would move that we grant the hearing request of North Texas Municipal Water District, that we refer the application to SOA for a contested case hearing on the following issue, whether issuance of the draft permit is consistent with TCEQ's regionalization policy, Texas Water Code sections 26.081 and 26.0282 and 30, tex 30 TAC chapter 351 subchapter C, including consideration of need for the proposed facility and designation of a regional entity, that we refer the matter to the Commission's Alternative Dispute Resolution Program to run concurrently with SOA's scheduling process, and that we set a hearing duration of 180 days from the date of the preliminary hearing until the proposal for decision is issued. I second the motion. The motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 The motion carries. Ms. Smith, when you're ready, please call the next item. Item number three is the consideration of the application by the City of Kyle for a major amendment to the TPDES permit number WQ0011041002 The parties have been notified that the commissioners will not take oral argument but may ask questions, and those who have signed in will be noted for the record. 
So again, we're looking for affected persons and referable issues. And again, requesters who are affected in a manner different from the general public and who make timely comments articulating personal concerns that are relevant and material to the application and who express those concerns in a timely hearing request are entitled to a hearing. And uh, again, associations can demonstrate, demonstrate standing if, among other factors, the association raises issues that are germane to its purpose and identifies a member who would have standing in their own right. We have two requests on this item, both from associations. The Greater Edwards Aquifer Alliance failed to identify a member who would have standing in their own right, so we must deny that request. The San Marcos River Foundation identifies a member who resides within a thousand feet of the facility. The foundation raised relevant and material issues that are germane to its purpose and has met the other procedural and substantive requirements to be entitled to a hearing, in my view. So I would grant the foundation's request. I agree. Likewise. All right, turning to the issues, I would refer the following, whether the draft permit is protective of water quality, whether it's protective of the health of the requester's members and their families, whether it's protective of wildlife, whether it meets the anti-degradation requirements and protects existing uses, and whether the draft permit should be altered or denied based on the applicant's compliance history. I agree. I will provide a motion presuming y'all are agreed that uh, a referral for ADR mm -hmm. is appropriate for this one. Yep. Then I move that we grant the hearing request of San Marcos River Foundation, deny all remaining hearing requests, refer the matter to, so, to the TCQ's Alternative Dispute Resolution Program to run concurrently with SOA preliminary hearing scheduling efforts, refer the application to SOA for contested case hearing on the following issues. A, whether the draft permit is protective of water quality, wildlife, and the requester's members and their families' health in accordance with applicable regulations, including the Texas Surface Water Quality Standards. B, whether the draft permit complies with applicable anti-degradation requirements and adequately protects existing uses and see whether the draft permit should be altered or denied based on the applicant's compliance history. And I finally move that we set a hearing duration of 180 days from the date of the preliminary hearing until the proposal for decision is issued. I second. The motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 The motion carries. Ms. Smith, when you're ready, please call the next item. Item number four is the consideration of the application by LVTP Holdings LLC for a new TPDS permit number WQ0015964001. The parties have been notified that the commissioners will not take oral argument but may ask questions, and those who have signed in will be noted for the record. All right, on this uh, TIPDES permit matter, we have hearing requests from two governmental entities as well as from Clay and Sheila Allison. The Allisons did not explain how they would be personally affected and do not raise issues within our jurisdiction on this type of application, so we have to deny their request. Um, however, I do believe that the city of Waxahachie and Ellis County have both demonstrated effectiveness. The facility would be located within the city's ETJ and may affect city functions and services. The facility and the discharge route are also located in the county and may affect the county's interests, including, for example, interest in drinking water and in surface water quality. So I would grant the request of the city and the county. I agree. All right, as for issues, I would refer to whether the draft permit is protective of water quality and existing uses in the receiving waters and whether the, the commission should deny or um, alter the, the permit based on the consideration of need or regionalization. I would agree. Likewise. And uh, I think that an ADR referral would also be appropriate on this one and probably allow the full 180 days. Agreed. I would move that we grant the hearing request of the city of Waxahachie and Ellis County, that we deny the hearing request of Clay and Sheila Allison, that we refer the application to SOA for a contested case hearing on the following issues. Issue one, whether the draft permit is protective of water quality and the existing uses and the receiving waters under the applicable rules, including Texas Surface Water Quality Standards in 30 TAC Chapter 307. And issue two, 
whether the commission should deny or alter the terms and conditions of the draft permit based on consideration of need under Texas Water Code Section 26.0282 and the general policy to promote regional or area-wide systems under Texas Water Code 26.081 that we refer the matter to the Commission's Alternative Dispute Resolution Program to run concurrently with SOA's scheduling process, and that we set a hearing duration of 180 days from the date of the preliminary hearing until the proposal for decision is issued. I second the motion. The motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 The motion carries. Ms. Smith, when you're ready, I'll ask you to please call the next item. Item number five is the consideration of the application by 130 Environmental Park LLC for a limited scope amendment to MSW permit number 2383. El punto número cinco es la consideración de la solicitud de 130 Environmental Park LLC para una enmienda de alcance limitado al permiso de MS. W numero 2383. The parties have been notified that the commissioners will not take oral argument but may ask questions. Se ha notificado a las partes que los miembros de la comisión no aceptarán argumentos orales. Those who have signed in will be noted for the record. Pero podrán hacer preguntas aquellos que han firmado serán anotados para el registro. I want to thank our translator for his assistance this morning. Quiero agradecer al traductor por su asistencia esta mañana. And may I ask you to introduce yourself and offer the commission any suggestions to help your translation run smoothly. Me gustaría que se presentara y que diera alguna sugerencia para que esta traducción sea efectiva. Hi, everyone. Good morning. This is Jesus Barsana. And I think you're doing pretty good with um, the way you're speaking right now. So that is helpful. Um, making pauses also helps. Thanks. Mr. Chairman, may I ask to clarify, uh, given that some of the requests for this matter were provided to the commission in Spanish uh, by way of explanation to the public who are wondering why this item and not others, um, I appreciate and, and thank uh, Mr. Persona as well. Quisiera agradecer al señor Barcena por esta traducción. Eh, las leyes para este eh, artículo específicamente ha, ha, ha cambiado para que pueda ser traducido al español. Thank you, Commissioner. Gracias, Comisionado. Our analysis of hearing requests. Nuestro análisis de audiencias solicitadas. On municipal solid waste permit amendments. En enmiendas municipales. Is in two parts. Es en dos partes. We first determine who's entitled to a hearing. Primero averiguamos quién Tiene derecho a una audiencia. And then which issues are referred. Y después cuáles eh, cuestiones son referidas. Requesters who are affected in a manner different from the general public. Solicitantes que son afectados más allá que un público general. And who make timely comments articulating personal concerns y que hacen comentarios oportunos sobre inquietudes that are relevant and material to the application que son relevantes y materiales para la solicitud and who express those concerns in a timely hearing request y que expresan esas inquietudes oportunos en una audiencia are entitled to a hearing Tienen derecho a una audiencia. 
an association can demonstrate standing if it also la asociación puede también raises issues that are germane to its purpose cuestiones que tienen que ver con el propósito and identifies a member who would have standing in their own right identifica a alguien que tenga derecho Colleagues, we have numerous requests on this item. Colegas, tenemos eh, un número de peticiones para este artículo. The first, from EPIC, meets the procedural and substantive requirements. El primero de EPIC, que... I'm sorry, can you repeat that, please? The, the first request from EPIC meets the procedural and substantive requirements. La primera solicitud de EPEC cumple con los requisitos. Including identifying Patton King as a member. Incluyendo a Patton King como un miembro. Mr. King, together with the King Family Trust. Mr. King junto con con la familia de los uh, trustees and other individuals whose properties are located within one and a quarter mile from the facility junto con los que están a una milla y, y cuarto de esta instalación have adequately demonstrated personal justiciable interests han expresado interés justificable that are different from those of the general public que son diferentes del público general I would include on that list Claudia Schroyer Brown incluiría en esa lista Claudia Schroyer Brown Robert Brown Robert Brown Susan Elizabeth Lane Susan Elizabeth Lane. Frank Sugru. Frank Sugru. And Dora Godino Trejo. And Dora Godino Trejo. So I would grant those requests. Así que aprobaría esas peticiones. Ms. Aviles did not file timely comments. La señora Aviles no lo hizo a tiempo sus comentarios. Because Ms. Holder resides more than three miles away, she is not affected in a manner different from the general public. Porque la señora Holder está a una distancia más larga y no es afectada como el público general. Mr. Friedrichs uh, failed to state a personal justiciable interest. El señor Friedrichs eh, no... no no comentó sobre algo justificable. And the remaining requesters provided no address. Y los solicitantes restantes no proporcionaron una dirección. So we should deny those requests. Así que debemos de negar esas peticiones. Colleagues, how do you see it? Colegas, ustedes cómo lo ven? I agree on the parties. I can move forward with that. Yo también puedo mover eso. All right, turning to the issues, I would refer just one. Volviendo a los problemas, voy a referirme a uno. Whether the applicant adequately justifies extending the operating hours. Si el solicitante justificablemente va a expander su horario on a limited scope amendment such as this en una enmienda del scope eh, así como esta it would be inappropriate to relitigate sería sería inapropiado y irregular other parts of their permit as independent issues 
otras partes del permiso como este. To put it differently, issues such as odor control. Para ponerlo diferente como cuestiones de olor. Access roads, nuisance prevention, and land use compatibility. El uso de carreteras, eh, molestias. Are outside the scope of this amendment. Así como las carreteras están fuera de esta enmienda. Those concerns may be relevant as rebuttal evidence. Esas cuestiones pueden ser relevantes. On the issue of whether the extended hours are justified. En la cuestión de que el horario extendible sea justificable. But do not stand as independent issues. Pero no están como cuestiones o problemas independientes. The request for reconsideration add no new facts. La solicitud de reconsideración no tiene nuevos hechos. So I would deny them. Así que lo voy a negar. Commissioner Lindley, what do you think? I'm in agreement. Commissioner Lindley, ¿qué piensa? Estoy en acuerdo. Likewise. Igualmente. Can I hear a motion? I will provide one. ¿Puedo escuchar una moción? Proporcionaré una. I move that we grant the hearing requests of Claudia Schroyer Brown and Robert Brown. Muevo que se apruebe la solicitud de Claudia Brown y Schroyer Brown. EPIC, or Environmental Protection in the Interest of Caldwell County. EPIC, o el Environmental eh, Ambiental de Protección. Patton King, the King Family Trust. La familia King, the Trust. Susan Elizabeth Lane, Frank Sugru. Susan Elizabeth Lane, Frank Sugru. And Dora Gudino Trejo. And Dora Gudino Trejo. I did not. I further move that we deny the remaining hearing requests and all requests for reconsideration. I move that we refer the matter to SOA for a contested case hearing on the following issue. Muevo que se vaya con SOA para una audiencia impugnada. Whether 130 Environmental Park has provided an adequate justification for expanding its facility hours beyond those established in 30 Texas Administrative Code Section 330.135. Si sí, el horario de 130 Environmental Park eh, va a extender el horario según eh, capítulo 30 del Administrativo Código de Texas. I further move that we deny all remaining hearing requests. Y muevo también que se nieguen las futuras peticiones. And move that we specify that the maximum duration of the hearing is 180 days from the preliminary hearing to issuance of the proposal for decision. Y muevo que la audiencia se mueva hasta un lapso de 180 días para la audiencia preliminar. And I'll clarify and repeat or correct my previous motion. Instead of deny all remaining hearing requests, I move that we deny all remaining issues. Y me corrijo y en lugar de eh, lo que había dicho de negar todas las peticiones futuras, Eh, van a ser eh, las que vienen en futuro. Do I hear a second? Yeah, a second. ¿Quién lo segunda? Sí, yo lo segundo. 
And just to be clear for the record, you said you asked to deny remaining hearing requests twice. And what you're saying is the second time you said deny hearing, hearing requests, you meant deny all issues. Y no más para estar claros, habías dicho que negar uh, las solicitudes restantes, pero dices eh, negar todas. Thank you for clarifying, Ms. Smith. That is precisely what I meant. Thanks. Gracias por clarificar. Es exactamente lo que quise decir. Understood. The motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Entendido. Esta moción se ha movido y todos en favor, por favor, digan aye. Aye. The motion carries. La moción prosigue. Thank you, Mr. Barsena. You're welcome. Ms. Smith, I'll ask you to please call the next item. Item number six is the consideration of the application by Nucor Corporation for issuance of post-closure order 33095 to authorize post-closure care and corrective actions at solid and hazardous waste units. Presentations will be limited to five minutes. The applicant may present the matter, although I understand that I don't see the applicant has registered, so they may not be here. The commission will then accept comments from any interested persons. Also, no one has signed in. No interested persons have signed in. Um, then hear from the ED and finally OPIC. So I think that leaves us with um, beginning with the ED. Good morning, Chairman, Commissioners, General Counsel, and Public Interest Counsel. For the record, my name is Audrey Leiter, and I'm an attorney in the Environmental Law Division representing the Executive Director. With me are Manisha Powdial and Isaac Vela with the Industrial and Hazardous Waste Permit Section of the Waste Permits Division and Aaron Correll of the Remediation Division. We are here to present a proposed post-closure order for Nucor Corporation for your review and approval. The Commission may issue a post-closure order to require and authorize post-closure care of a Corrective Action Management Unit, or CAMU, in lieu of a post-closure permit. A post-closure order must address facility-wide corrective action requirements and groundwater monitoring requirements in accordance with sections 335.156 through 335.167 of TCEQ rules. Nucor Corporation constructed a CAMU for the disposal of waste from on-site remediation activities pursuant to a 2001 consent decree with EPA. The proposed order would require and authorize Nucor to conduct post-closure care of the CAMU, conduct RICRA facility investigations, implement necessary corrective action for releases from solid waste management units, and establish financial assurance for post-closure care and corrective action. The executive director has determined that the proposed post-closure order meets the statutory and regulatory requirements including corrective action and groundwater monitoring requirements. The executive director respectfully recommends the commission issue the post-closure order. We're available for any questions you may have. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Ms. Leiter. I have none. Colleagues, any questions? No, thank you. No, thank you. And to confirm, nobody is signed in to speak on this item. That's correct. All right. And let's get the thoughts of the Office of Public Interest Counsel. Good, Good morning. morning, Chairman. Commissioners, General Counsel, and Executive Director. My name is Eli Martinez, and I'm with the Office of Public Interest Counsel for the record. We've reviewed the uncontested post-closure order for Nucor's Corrective Action Management Unit, its proposed compliance plan, and post-closure care of the CAMU, the proposed monitoring of concentrations of hazardous constituents in groundwater, and the proposed remediation of groundwater quality to achieve applicable standards. The post-closure order requires sufficient financial assurance, access controls, training, inspections and emergency procedures, and land disposal restrictions. 
We agree that the order complies with chapters 335 and 305 of our rules and the relevant enabling statutes in uh, chapter 361 of the Health and Safety Code. Further notice was provided in accordance with chapter 39 of our rules as well as the relevant sections of the Resource Conservation and Recovery Act. Uh, additionally, we are pleased to see that NUCOR historically has conducted itself in accordance with the terms of its permit and has not received any NOVs or orders within the five-year look-back period of its most recent compliance history report. Uh, we expect that they will continue to be a responsible actor throughout the duration of the post-closure order, and we therefore agree at this time that the post-closure order, if it is issued, meets all of the relevant statutory and regulatory requirements uh, and recommend that it be adopted by the Commission. Thank you, Mr. Martinez. Um, Colleagues, I believe this order is appropriate, and pending your thoughts, I'm ready to approve it. Uh, same. Um, Likewise. I would move, then, that we approve the post-closure order, number 33095, between Nucor Corporation and the Commission, as recommended by the Executive Director. I second. The motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 The motion carries. Ms. Smith, when you're ready, please call the next item. Item number seven is the consideration of the nomination and appointment of six individuals to the Tax Relief for Pollution Control Property Advisory Committee, and the Executive Director's staff is here to present. Good morning. Good morning, Commissioners, General Counsel, and Public Interest Counsel. On behalf of the Executive Director, I am Elizabeth Sartain with the Air Quality Division. With me is Guy Henry with the Environmental Law Division. As described in section 1131 of the Texas Tax Code, the TCQ shall establish a permanent advisory committee to advise the commission regarding the implementation of the tax relief for pollution control property program. The committee consists of 13 members and six of those members terms expire on December 31st, 2023. The expiring committee positions include three industry representatives, one taxing unit representative, one environmental group representative, and one representative from a school or junior college district in which property that is or was previously subject to an exemption under Texas Tax Code 1131. Notice of the vacancies was published in the Texas Register, posted on the TCEQ website, and sent to Gov Delivery subscribers to solicit applications. The submitted applications and the executive director's recommendations for appointments to the positions are presented today for your consideration. These appointments will serve a four-year term. We thank you for your consideration of this matter and are available to answer any questions. Thank you, Ms. Sartain. I have none. Colleagues, any questions? Ms. Smith, is anybody signed in to speak? No one signed in. Mr. Arthur, what does OPIC think? Good morning, Chairman and Commissioners. For the record, I'm Garrett Arthur, TCQ Public Interest Council. OPIC supports adoption of the resolution proposed by the ED. Thank you, Mr. Arthur. Um, I want to thank the members and nominees for their service to this important committee, and um, I appreciate the recommendation. I agree with it, and I'm ready to move forward. I move that we adopt the proposed resolution appointing the following individuals as members of the Tax Relief for Pollution Control Property Advisory Committee to expire on December 31st, 2027. Lloyd Graham as a representative from a school district or junior college district. Adam Haynes as a representative from a taxing unit. Justin Highland as a representative from industry. Gregory Maxim as a representative from industry. Michael Nassi as a representative from industry, and Dr. Cyrus Reed as a representative from an environmental group. I second. The motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 The motion carries. Ms. Smith, when you're ready, please call the next items. That takes us to our enforcement docket, which are items 8 through 17. And 
items 19 through 27. The Office of General Counsel remanded item 18 at the request of the Executive Director on December 11th. The Executive Director's staff is here to present these matters. Good morning. Good morning, Chairman, Commissioners, General Counsel, and Public Interest Counsel. For the record, my name is Melissa Cordell of the Enforcement Division, and with me today are Michael Parrish, also of the Enforcement Division, and Gitanjali Yadav of the Litigation Division representing the Executive Director. Pending before you are items 8 through 17 and 19 through 27. The total assessed administrative penalties are $645,066 with $117,749 deferred, $185,732 applied towards supplemental environmental projects, and $341,585 to the general revenue. We respectfully request approval of these items and are available to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Ms. Cordell. I have none. Any questions, colleagues? No, thank you. Seeing none, Ms. Smith, is anybody signed in to speak? Um, we have someone signed in on 21 who's available for questions, but nobody is asked to address the commission. Thank you. Mr. Arthur, what do you think? OPIC supports adoption of these enforcement orders as presented by ED staff. Colleagues, I do too. I'm ready to move forward. I do too. I'd move that we adopt items 8 through 17 and 19 through 27 as recommended by the executive director. A second. The motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 The motion carries. Ms. Smith, please call the next item. Item number 28 is the consideration of the monthly enforcement report and the executive director's staff is here to present. Good morning, Chairman, Commissioners, General Counsel, and Public Interest Counsel. My name is Melissa Cordell of the Enforcement Division and with me are Michael Parrish of the Enforcement Division and Gitanjali Yadav of the Litigation Division. We are here to present the monthly enforcement report for fiscal year 2024 through October. There were 88 effective administrative orders issued and of those, nine contained supplemental environmental projects. These orders assessed a total of $2,986,015 with a payable amount of $779,690. $2,133,053 are to be paid for supplemental environmental projects. 2,426 notices of violation have been issued through either our field offices or review of self-reported data in our central office and 246 enfor enforcement action referrals have been received. There are 2,643 pending administrative orders with 1,460 cases that are on the backlog. 177 cases are pending at the Attorney General's Office for Representation in District Court. 2,076 cases are being tracked for compliance. We are available to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Ms. Cordell. I have none. Any questions, colleagues? Seeing none, Ms. Smith, is anyone signed in to speak? No one is signed in. Mr. Arthur. OPIC has no comment except to say we appreciate the report. I also appreciate the report and colleagues, there's no action necessary on this item. So Ms. Smith, I'll ask you to please call the next items. That takes us to items 29 through 32, which are the quadrennial rule reviews for 30 Texas Administrative Code, chapters 114, 290, 330, and 335. And the executive director's staff is here to present this matter, these Good. matters. Good morning. Good morning, Chairman, Commissioners, General Counsel, and Public Interest Counsel. On behalf of the executive director, I'm Gwen Rico with the General Law Division. Pending before you are items 29 through 32, the adopted rule reviews of 30 Texas Administrative Code, Chapter 114, Control of Air Pollution from Motor Vehicles, Chapter 290, Public Drinking Water, Chapter 330, Municipal Solid Waste, and Chapter 335, Industrial Solid Waste and Municipal Hazardous Waste. As required by the Texas Government Code, Section 2001.039, Executive Director's staff conducted a rule review of these chapters to determine if the need for the rules within these chapters continue to exist. The proposed notices for these reviews were published in the June 30th, 2023 issue of the Texas Register with 30-day comment periods. No comments were received for the rule reviews of these chapters. Based on the review of these chapters, the executive director has determined that the reasons for the rules in chapters 114, 290, 330, and 335 continue to exist, and changes to the rules identified as part of this review process will be addressed in a separate rulemaking action in accordance with the Texas Administrative Procedure Act. In conclusion, we respectfully recommend approval of the adoption of the rule reviews of Chapter 114, 290, 330, and 335. 
Additionally, staff requests authorization to make non-substantive revisions necessary to comply with Texas Register requirements. Thank you. The project managers and attorneys assigned to these chapters are here to answer any questions. Thank you, Ms. Rico. I have none. Colleagues, any questions? No. Ms. Smith, no, is anybody signed in to speak? No. Mr. Arthur. OPIC agrees that the reasons for initially adopting the Chapter 114, 290, 330, and 335 rules continue to exist, and we support readoption of the rules in each of these chapters. Thank you, Mr. Arthur. Colleagues, I agree. There's still a need, so and so. there were no comments. I'm ready to move forward. I move we adopt the rule reviews and readopt the rules in 30 Texas Administrative Code Chapters 114, 290, 330, and 335 without amendment as recommended by the Executive Director. I second. The motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 The motion carries. Ms. Smith, please call the next items. Uh, the next item is our public comment session. Currently, no one is signed in, but we can pause to see if anyone here wants to speak and, and unmute the line also. Is there anybody in the room or online who'd like to offer a comment? All right, Ms. Smith, let's call the next items. The commission will meet in closed session in building E, room 326 at 1025 as permitted by the Open Meetings Act, including Texas Government Code sections 551.071 and 551.074 to take up and consider matters pursuant to items number uh, 34 through 37 as posted and noticed. The time is 1021. We are in recess.
Time is 11.26 a.m. We are back in session after having met in executive session. Ms. Smith, I'll ask you to call the next item. The commission met in building E, room 326 for closed session from 10.29 a.m. until 11.25 a.m. on items 34 through 37 as posted in notice pursuant to Texas Government Code, section 551.074. On items 34, 36 and 37, no action was taken. And I understand on item 35, which includes the deliberation um, regarding appointment of certain employees of the agency that the commission would like to take action. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Colleagues, I move that we appoint Kelly Keel as executive director of TCEQ effective immediately. I second. The motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 The motion carries unanimously. The time is 1127. We are adjourned.